Hi, I'm Mark from easylawnmowing.co.uk and in this video I'm going to share with you six points that you should consider before purchasing any robotic lawnmower. By the end of this video you'll have all the information you need to decide which robotic lawnmower is best for you and your lawn. Okay, so your first consideration when considering a robotic lawnmower is your lawn size. So you're going to need to measure the size of your lawn or your lawns uh, and that will determine first of all, which model you can actually go for. So for example, this lawnmaster here will only cover up to 100 square meters, where right at the other end of the spectrum, you have this Luba, which covers up to 5,000 square meters. And then these are somewhere in between four, 500, 600 square meters. So it's really crucial that you, you measure the size of your lawn. I'll put a link in the description below this video uh, to another video actually that shows you how to easily measure uh, the square meterage of your lawn. So that's the first thing. So what actually determines how much uh, square meterage these robotic lawnmowers can cover? Well, the first thing is the deck size. So if we have a quick look underneath this lawnmaster here, you can see that it's got a 16 centimeter cutting width there. There's a single uh, blade there. Well, there's three blades, but it's a single disc that cuts, cuts the lawn 16 centimeters on each pass. But if we turn over the Luba, for example, you can see here that it's much wider, A, because it has uh, two, two discs uh, with four blades each, and that's cutting 40 centimeters uh, in width. So that's comparable to any petrol cordless or electric lawnmower. So that's, so that's the one consideration that determines how much um, ground they can actually cover. The second is the battery. So um, they'll come with different amp hours, and that really determines how much runtime you're going to get. So with this Luba, for example, on a single charge, you're gonna get around three and a half hours of mowing time. So that's combined with this 40 centimeter deck is going to give you that coverage of 5,000 square meters. So as I hinted to earlier, there's also the number of lawns that you want to cut and how you get from one lawn to the other is also a consideration. So uh, for example, this Luba here, this will cut up to 10 zones. This will cut 10 lawn, 10 separate areas uh, independently. So for example, there's three models. There's the 5,000, there's the 3,000 and the 1,000. So this will cut 10 zones, the 3,000 will cut six zones and the 1,000 model will cut just three zones. So you need to make sure that the mower that you purchase, the robotic mower that you purchase is going to cover the amount of separate zones you have or lawns that you have uh, in, your, in your garden. So also in terms of lawn size and how much a particular lawn mower can cut, the same model can cut different size lawns. So this lawn master, for example, comes in the L10 and it also comes in the L12. They look absolutely identical. It's just the amount of time that they actually mow. So this uh, L10 will cover 400 square meters. The L12 model of this will cover 800 square meters. So again, just be careful which model you actually go for and make sure that it's, it's actually over the amount of lawn that you actually want to cut. Okay, so point two is actually the technology that's used for your, the navigation on your robotic lawnmower. So essentially there's three types of technology that can be used. So these two here, for example, are the traditional boundary wire. So you have a wire that you have to run around the perimeter of your lawn and that ensures that the robotic mower knows exactly uh, where not to go over. So this does cause complications if you have a flower bed in the, in the middle, for example, you're going to have to run this wire out to the flower bed, around the flower bed and then come back onto the perimeter and carry on and do that for all of the no-go areas that you have in your lawn. So these have been around for, for several years now or many years, this traditional boundary wire model, we're now starting to see other types of technology come in. So that's the first technology is the boundary wire. The second is camera. So this lawnmaster, for example, has a camera at the front. And what it does is it tries to see where the perimeter of the lawn is. Um, the only issue with that is your perimeter of your lawn needs to be well defined. So it needs to have an edge between the lawn and say some gravel or a pathway so this can clearly see where the perimeter is. The third type of technology and this is new really for 2023 and it's a fantastic technology is actually GPS. Well it's not GPS on its own, it's GPS with a technology that sits on top of the GPS to make it more accurate. 
So GPS on its own wouldn't be accurate enough to guide a mower around the lawn. However, with technologies like RTK, EPOS, uh, on top of that GPS makes this accurate down to two centimeters. So this is really fantastic because there's no perimeter wire to, to install around the lawn. You simply walk around the lawn to define where the edge of the lawn is. You then define your uh, no-go areas as we talked about that these are a little bit complicated to set up. Um, and then the robotic mower knows exactly where to mow and where not to mow. It's a really, really excellent technology. It saves a lot of time in terms of setup. And it, like I said earlier, it allows you to, to mow multiple zones and have channels between those zones as well. So this will actually mow my rear lawn here. It will then head off down the path, across the driveway, out to the front, mow the front lawn, make its way back to the rear lawn, park itself on the charger, and then recharge. So it's a really, really fantastic technology. So that's really the choice you have when it comes to technology. Naturally, there is a price difference, which we'll be discussing uh, a little bit later. On top of the actual main technology that they have, they also have additional sensors. So these are obstacle avoidance sensors. Well, some of them do. So for example, this lawn master here, we said earlier it has a camera to see where the perimeter of the lawn is, but it also has these two ultrasonic sensors. So if it detects any obstacles in the way, it will stop and it will go around that obstacle. So it won't make contact with the actual obstacle. This lawnmaster here, for example, this has no ultrasonic sensors. It's purely relying on the boundary wire and any obstacles on the lawn, it will actually bump into, it will make contact, it will detect that, then it will reverse and go round. That's the same with this Landroid. This has no ultrasonic sensors, but one thing to be uh, aware of is with the Landroids, you can purchase additional uh, optional extras which attach to the Landroid, so that one of the optional extras is the ultrasonic sensors. So at the moment, this on its own will again bump into the obstacle on the lawn like this one. But if I did purchase the, um, the ultrasonic sensors for this model, then that wouldn't do that. It would avoid that obstacle before it made contact with it. Okay, so that's the type of technologies that you need to consider in terms of navigation when purchasing a robotic mower. So the third point that you need to consider is the layout of your lawn or the terrain in your, of your lawn. So if you have steep slopes, for example, you need to ensure that your robotic mower can deal with those slopes. And again, that varies widely across the range of mowers. So for example, these Lawn Masters and this works uh, model here, they will deal with slopes around 35%, 35 to 45%. Uh, again, this Luba mower, this will deal with 75%. So this is fantastic. And that's really down to the, the, the fact that this Luba is four wheel drive. So all four wheels are powered independently. You have these really deep treads with these rubber tires and the four wheels allows this to deal with slopes up to 75%. So just be sure that the mower you purchase is going to deal with the particular uh, slope in your lawn. We also talked a little bit about no-go areas. So if you have a flower bed or a trampoline on your lawn that you don't want the mower to mow, just ensure that there's a method there that you can use to m create a no-go zone uh, around that particular obstacle so that the mower is not con continually bumping into it or getting stuck. In so the, the fourth bed. point to consider is the range and number of cutting heights on your robotic lawnmower because naturally you're going to want to adjust the height uh, through the mowing season. So for example the lawnmaster here has a range of cutting heights between 20 and 60 millimeters. The Luba here has a slightly different range of 30 to 70 millimeters. So the way you adjust the height of the of the mowers is is pretty straight is pretty standard across the range really. There's normally a dial on the top here or the side of the mower and then that just simply turns and you can see the the deck there moving up and down. Uh, the exception to that on the more higher end models so on this Luba for example the height is not adjusted manually, it's adjusted through the app. So when you schedule the mower to go out and cut, you specify what height you want it to cut at and it adjusts the height automatically. Fantastic feature on these uh, higher end models. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to schedule my rear lawn at 40 millimeters, I then wanted the mower to go out to the front, I'd cut the lawn at say 50 or 60 millimeters, you can do that with this automated system. So naturally you can't do that with these, you're gonna to have to manually go out and adjust the height. 
So point five is the features that you require with your robotic mower. So there are some robotic mowers like the, Luba, uh, like the Lawn Masters here that don't have a phone app. Uh, they're just simply controlled from the control panel on the robotic mower itself. Or this Lawn Master, for example, is just a drop and go robotic lawn mower. These, this Landroid and this Luba, they both have apps, but they do have different functionality and different features uh, within the app. So you need to just understand how you want your robotic lawn mower to work and make sure that that feature is included within the settings of the robotic mower. So for example, on this Luba here, we have a rain sensor. We also have a rain sensor here on the works, but oh, we do have one actually on this particular lawnmaster, but there's no rain sensor on this lawnmaster here. So what that means is if it detects rain, it will go back into its garage, re start recharging and wait for the rain to stop. So it's not mowing on really soft, wet ground and chewing up your lawn. There's also other scheduling features. So with the Luba, so as I, I explained earlier, with the multi-zones, so you can cut at different heights on different lawns, for example, uh, and you can cut different patterns as well with this Luba. So I can say I want a checkerboard pattern on this lawn and I want an efficient cut on the front lawn. So I just want you to go over quickly on the front lawn. So it's those types of features and configurations um, that you need to consider. Do you want to be able to control your robotic mower from your phone when you're not at home, for example, reschedule it, stop it mowing, that kind of thing, then those are the kind of features that you need to investigate uh, before purchasing. So remember, over on the easylawnmowing.co.uk website, I do full reviews of these robotic mowers, so you understand exactly what features you are getting with each particular model. So the last point for your consideration is the price. So as you can imagine, there's a huge price range here between the models. So for example, this lawnmaster here is around 350 pounds. The works here, you're looking at around 600 pounds, but the Luba here, this GPS RTK guided model is around 3000 pounds. So really it's horses for courses. You need to understand what the size of your lawn is, what you're trying to achieve with your robotic mower and also what features and functions you want from your robotic lawnmower. So if I have a 50 square meter lawn, I just really want it to be cut ready for the weekend. I'm not gonna go out and spend 3,000 pounds on the Luba. Um, again, if I had a huge lawn, you know, 5,000 square meters, and multiple zones, complications in terms of no-go areas, then yes, the Luba may well be the mower, the investment for me that's going to save me the time uh, spending two, three hours a week mowing my huge lawn. So really, it's a consideration in terms of the what you're trying to achieve with your robotic lawn mower, your budget, uh, and also the return on investment for any robotic mower that you purchase. Okay, that's it. So we've covered six points that you need to consider before purchasing any robotic lawnmower. So what now? So what I would suggest you do is head on over to the easylawnmowing.co.uk website where there's a lawnmower picker tool that will allow you to select all of the things that we've just spoken about and that will shortlist down and narrow down the selection to the robotic mowers that meet your exact requirements. You can then dig in deeper and have a look at a full review of each robotic mower. So I hope you found this video useful and I hope it's provided some tips for you to enable you to choose the best robotic lawnmower for your lawn and for your circumstances. There's plenty of articles and reviews over on the easylawnmowing.co.uk website. So why not head on over there, take a look and I'm sure you'll be able to source your next robotic lawnmower. So if you did find this video useful, could I please ask that you click the thumbs up button below this video, it'd be much appreciated. And why not subscribe to my channel as well and click the bell if you want to get notifications of any future videos that I release. If you have any questions at all, please put it in the comments box below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Thanks very much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.